18th ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs and the Portland Pilots to tip off West Coast Conference play between these two teams. Steve Andres alongside Tim McCormick. And the Pilots pick to finish second in the preseason West Coast Conference. Coaches poll will start with the ball. And trust me, if, if you like your basketball fast and in transition, this is the game for you. Niedermeyer, a three off the bat, no good. Smelters goes for the board, out of bounds to the Bulldogs. And, and Steve, here's the deal. Portland loves the three ball. They are the best in the WCC. And with the length of Gonzaga, I want to see if they're going to be able to get their shot off. Foul on the baseline, offensive foul will go the other way. Eric Rebino, the head coach for the Pilots in his fourth season. Only here four years, but his staff is the third longest tenured in this conference. A lot of turnover. And the one thing he told us before the game, Tim, is that he needs his players to believe that they can knock off this Gonzaga team. And that's a tall test. They're going for their 10th straight championship. Rivio, the floater on the baseline falls. Nick Rivio, a last name that a lot of Bulldogs fans We'll know his brother Derek was an honorable mention All-American at Gonzaga. And Matt Bolden with the ball to Dimitri Goodson pulls up, knocks it down. Tied up in two in the early going. Now both of these coaches very similar from the standpoint motion offense. They prefer man-to-man -man defense, but because of rosters and youth, they're going to play a lot of zone as well. This is what Coach Reveno told us before the game. Did not want to get in too many half-court sets on offense. Wanted to run and gun. Rivio again and a foul on Stephen Gray. We'll take a look at Gonzaga's head coach. His 21st season in the Gonzaga program. His 11th year as head coach. The second best winning percentage among active coaches behind North Carolina's Roy Williams. They had shoot around. Coach Few told us that he wants a, an extremely fast pace, even on the road against an up-tempo team. And boy, that's a big foul. Stephen Gray with two. Almost a turnover. Kramer Knutson comes up with it. And Campbell will reset the offense for the Pilots. A very experienced team. Top nine players for this Pilot squad are juniors or seniors. Top 10 scores back, all five starters inside. Robin Smelters gets a good look in the low post. Bolden very quickly back the other way inside to Robert Sacre. It's Goodson now, Bull Kong, who's checked into the game. And Matt Bolden was telling us today that if they go inside and have success, their offense is so much more efficient on the perimeter. You mean just like that? Uh-huh. Elias Harris, 6'8", freshman out of Spire, Germany, one of the many freshmen playing for this Gonzaga team. And another foul, this one on Dimitri Goodson. This is the 150th meeting all time between these two schools. You see Gonzaga has the lead. Portland has not beaten Gonzaga since the 2003 season. They've lost 10 in a row. But all the talk going into this game from both sides and in the preseason back in October was if there was anybody that was going to knock off this Gonzaga team from its pedestal atop the West Coast Conference, it was this Portland team this year. Rivio around the screen, knocks it down. Very quickly the other way inside the Sagre, triple team. Still has his pivot and a travel, lost the pivot. Eric Reveno told his team, this is a memory game. If you beat Gonzaga, someday you'll be telling your grandkids about the time that you knocked off the Zags. And he referenced when he was an assistant coach at Stanford, he remembers the time they beat Arizona on the road to win the Pac-10. Those are the kind of milestones that this Portland program is looking for. They've had a couple milestones this year. Beat UCLA by 27 and beat a ranked Minnesota team as well. Jumper from Niedermeyer is no good. And Matt Bolden very quickly the other way to Goodson. Inside to Harris and he's double teamed again. A lot of double teams in the low post early on, Tim. Bull Kong tries a three, no good. Rebounded. That's Luke Sigma with it. His dad, 
the NBA All-Star for many years. Quickly the other way, Campbell blocked underneath. 5'8 <laughs> versus 6'10. Just doesn't seem fair, does it? Mismatch inside. Sigma. Campbell tries a three right outside, no good. Out of bounds to Gonzaga. What I'm looking for early is the battle on the boards. Both of these teams desire a fast tempo. If you rebound the ball, Steve, you play any pace that you want. Number 20, Jared Stoll checks into the game. He is a three-point threat for Portland, shooting 45% from beyond the arc. Inside for Harris, almost got it to go, but he'll go to the line for two. Takes us to our first break, 6-4 pilots in the early going. Some of the nation's best college hockey. Just about four minutes in, inside of a sold-out Child Center in Portland in the Pilots with an early 6-4 lead over number 18, Gonzaga. You see the preseason coaches poll in the West Coast Conference. Gonzaga picked once again to win their 10th consecutive regular season title in the West Coast Conference, but Portland right behind a couple first-place votes as well. Steve Andres once again alongside a former Michigan Wolverine 10-year NBA veteran Tim McCormick. And Tim, two teams, Gonzaga's been there before they know how to do it. Portland, maybe their best shot in a long time to try and knock off the Zags. Yeah, Steve, and a fantastic way to start out the West Coast Conference schedule. You've got the perennial powerhouse versus the upstart. Let's talk about Gonzaga first. A lot of questions coming into this season because they lost four stars to pro basketball from last year when they played in the Sweet 16. How have they done? Well, quite well. In my opinion, they are the best team west of the Rockies so far. And on the other bench, you've got Portland. You may not know about them. Well, neither did Minnesota, UCLA, and Oregon. The Pilots took each of them down. And Steve, the big number tonight for Portland is 10. I believe they need 10 threes and to keep their turnovers around 10 to have a chance to win. It would help if this guy knocks down a couple threes for them. Nick Rivio and Matt Bolden, the leading scorer for the Zags. Yeah, this is a marquee matchup on the perimeter. A couple outstanding guards. Now, Matt Bolden is the most complete perimeter player in all of college basketball. He plays the one, two, and three equally well. And in the WCC, he's in the stat leaders in nine different columns. We all know Rivio, if you're a Zags fan, his brother was a big time star. And his coach, Mark Few, raved about his competitiveness. Out of the timeout, Elias Harris misses the first of two free throws, a 72% free throw shooter. Has the only two double doubles on the year for Gonzaga as he hits the second. Those came against Illinois in the Zags last game. As Taishi Ito picks up the press, number five for Portland, the only Japanese player in Division I NCAA basketball right now has the ball. Guarded closely by Goodson, Sigma top of the key. Around the stool, look out for him. He has range for days. Smelders working on Sakurai, blocked for the foul. He'll go to the line. Uh, and trust me, that, that's a big part of the pilot's offense. If you get Sacre in foul trouble, your job gets a lot easier. When he goes to the bench, this becomes a non-shot blocking lineup. Almost had the block there. He has 18 to lead Gonzaga as the first one rims out. Smelters was sick earlier this week, had the flu Monday and Tuesday. Says he's all fine now, but needed five IVs while he was recovering from that in a trip to the hospital. 7-5 Portland as we approach 15 minutes left in the first half. Harris again double teamed the low post inside to Sackery quickly to Bolden and a block underneath. That may have been a charge last year, but the new rule in the NCAA, a secondary defender cannot take a charge if he is underneath the basket, and that was awfully close to that. Matt Bolden is a very creative scorer. Knocks down the three, the mid-range game is supreme, and I like him when he goes in the paint. Today at shoot around, he was mentioning the fact that, that he really has to be crafty out there, and as a point guard, he doesn't have the same speed, obviously, as a John Wall, so he uses tricks and deception 
he thinks the game and goes back to when he was a kid. His dad really.